equipment production per year. And 167, is that a prime number? Well, is it divisible by two, three, five? Is it is it the product of prime numbers 13 and then 17? Somewhere it's in between those. So yes, it's prime. All right, what is your production per year? And this is an extremely personal answer. It might be one every two years. It might be one a month, one being a full length book. And it's okay, it has to work for you. This is the most important thing. A lot of people uh, show up in 20 books to 50K and they say, I can't write 20 books in a year. No kidding. Uh, very, very few people can. That's not the premise of it. It's a retirement plan. If you have 20 books earning X amount, it doesn't matter if you wrote, if you took 20 years to write them, as long as they're each earning 750 a day for the year, then hey, 50,000, you can retire in Cabo, have a nice day. <laughs> That's all that is. It's not 20 books in a year. So stop. Extremely personal. What works for you? And this is why I say within your capacity, what can you produce without driving yourself insane? You under promise and over deliver. So manage your reader expectations. Tell them if you think you can do three books a year, tell them two. It's the Scotty rule in Star Trek that uh, how can you be the miracle worker if you tell them what it's actually going to take? So <clears throat> three books, do two. And then if you get three done, great. But then you don't have this unnatural pressure on yourself. Oh, my God, everything has to work perfectly for the entire year for me to get three books out. So I'm going to tell my readers three books. No, don't do that. <clears throat> for example, 2020, could anyone predict the turbulence and turmoil in that year? If you promised a bunch of books and all of a sudden you're homeschooling, guess what? Under promise and over deliver. Self-discipline, build in slack. And I don't mean the program slack. I mean slack time as in, <clears throat> once again, if you think you can write three books, tell people to set your, set your uh, schedules for two and try to stay ahead. It's always better if you can be ahead of schedule, even if that schedule is a loose schedule, uh, as opposed to, oh, hey, I gave myself a year to write this, so I'm going to take a full year. So 11 months, you do nothing, and then all of a sudden, you're trying to jam and get it done for a month. No, pace yourself. So build in the slack, but take that, take that one-year uh, milestone, break it down into inch stones, and meet those inch targets. And it, the inch targets, if you need 1,000 words a day, one day you get 500, next you get 1,500, you get about 7,000 a week. Maybe that's the maybe that's the number you need to go with, but that's your production. You have to know what you can produce comfortably. And then sometimes you have to push yourself too, and it's okay, but only you push yourself. Don't let other people push you like, hey, how come you're not getting 5,000 words today? Don't, don't do that because you're going to see, once again, unnatural pressure, and you're going to self-destruct. You're going to melt down. In between writing your books, you have to build your readership. These are your, this is your core following of folks who are going to buy your books when they come out. That's what you want. You want to build more and more readership. <clears throat> you need to build in time for that. You can't just always just write. Even big trad pub names, they don't always just write. They also have to market. Now, the bigger the name, the less you have to market actively. But we still, in our in our business here, everybody is marketing actively, trying to figure out the ads that work, trying to figure the avenues, build readership, so each each uh, successive launch gets bigger and bigger. That's how you control your own destiny. Say you write one doorstopper a year, great, that's perfect. What about a short a short story or a novella in between those full length books? You have to look at your cash flow. And if you're building a readership and you have a big base, a novella, something you can write 30,000 words, you jam that baby out and uh, you put it out. Hey, that can that can uh, fill a cash flow gap in your business, because once again, it's production. You are the talent. You are the creative content. You are the you are the cat's meow for your business, because without you, nobody's there's no stories to read and no good stories because you don't. There's not you to improve, to write better, to listen to your fans, to say, yes, I can. let me tweak this. Let me shape the scene better. Let me make these characters more believable. Let me do these great things so the story entertains that much better. That's you. So <clears throat> you have to do that, but you also have to have your business hat on. So keep that in mind when you're planning your yearly production. And don't compete against other people. You're only competing against yourself. That's the important point to, to, to follow 
you could say, hey, I like that he produces a book every two months. I think I can do that. Sure. Shoot for shoot for goals because you've seen what other people are capable of doing. But then when you refine and revise and say, yes, this works for me, then do that. And don't say I'll do a book a year and then wait 11 months before you, you start writing. Uh, don't do it that way. OK, that's about it. Personal. It's your decision under promise over deliver. That's the best uh, recipe and manage your reader expectations. Let your readers know what you're going to do and then do it. You build trust, you give them a good product and then they're on board for the next one. All right, there you go. Your yearly production plan. Peace, fellow humans.